As you can see behind me, I've got Sony's brand new 85 inch X95L television set. It's a mini LED TV and it's got some pretty good audio already. But what we're gonna do today is hook up a couple of audio options to improve the sound output on the television set. First one is gonna be Sony's HTA 7000 soundbar. Pairing up with this soundbar, I've got Sony's SW5 wireless subwoofer. And also with this soundbar, I've got a pair of their wireless rear surround speakers. That's gonna be option one. Option two is gonna be their flagship AVR, the 7000 ES. But before we get everything all hooked up, let's go ahead and check out the sound output on the television itself. About your time with us? We were... We weren't anything. You and me? That person was some alternate future version of me. Wasn't me. We loved each other. I don't think so. I know you don't remember any of it. You were everything to me. It's probably hard to tell in the video, but I think Sony's got the best built-in speakers on a television. If you happen to have an OLED, they have actuators behind the screen so that the sound comes directly from the screen itself, like it would sound if you were at a movie theater. For this particular set, they've mounted tweeters in the upper part of the frame so that the sound projects outwards, and then there's two pairs of mid-range and subwoofer drivers at the bottom that fire out of the small slot on the lower edge of the TV. And if you're sitting at at least 8 to 9 feet away from the television, the sound does kind of appear to come from the screen. It doesn't get super loud and there isn't too much bass, but it's got good enough mid-range projection to give the sound a little weight to it. Look at that, that's nice. It's actually pretty nice. So it's got the glossy top, maybe like Lexan or, I don't think it's glass, but I think it's like plastic. But up top here, you get your power button. There's a source selection button, Bluetooth, music streaming, volume down and volume up. On the other end, nothing here except for the bronze looking Sony logo, which is nice. Gives it a little bit of class. On the top, there are up firing speakers on that side and on the opposite side. These are one by two inch speakers, I believe. I'll put the specs on top of the top of the screen. And then on the front, you have five speakers. So there's one, two, three, four, five. So this is your left speaker, center speaker and right speaker and also behind here well these are also one by two inch drivers as well and then there's two subwoofers in here quote unquote subwoofers which is three two by three i think which are these two guys here so i think they're in chambers kind of like a ported chamber inside which is supposed to help out with bass response and then on the left and right sides if you can see that behind the grill by the way this grill does not come off there are 16 millimeter wide dispersion tweeters here, which are supposed to expand the sound outwards, which I would think is supposed to kind of create some phantom side surrounds, just make everything a, a lot bigger sounding. And on the bottom here, we've got your spots for the wall mounts on this side and on the opposite side, and then around back, 
row back we have some connections we've got a usb in connection we've got your auxiliary connection 3.5 mil hdmi out hdmi in behind the sticker and on this opposite side here you've got your optical and your tv input for for the tv your analog input and then also on this side here you have one more hdmi input right behind the sticker it's labeled so you don't mess it up and this is a pretty heavy soundbar this weighs 19 pounds it's uh 51 inches long by six inches deep by only three and a quarter inches high so this is supposed to give you 7.1.2 surround sound from this single sound bar the seven channels is up front here you know pseudo virtual side surround speakers point one is obviously going to be the subwoofers and then point two is going to be the up primary speakers this is sony's sw5 wireless subwoofer but from the looks of it it looks pretty nice i mean you can see here on the on the on the side you've got the sony branding on that side and then on the opposite side you also have the sony branding as well kind of like this goldish bronze color which gives it a kind of a luxurious appearance and also this has a textured leather at finish so it looks like leather even though it's plastic the material here well the texture finish looks like it's leather so this guy here size wise it's something like 16 by 16 by i think on the bottom if we can get in there i don't know if you can see in there but there's a passive radiator on the bottom there and then on the front of the subwoofer there's a seven inch driver up front around back you have your power input power button and then your link button this is a 300 watt subwoofer but this will link wirelessly the a7000 soundbar handling surrounds are the sars 5s these are wireless speakers with up to 10 hours of battery life so it is wireless or if you want you can plug them in on the bottom you can see where the power inlet is right there there is a power button and then up top you've got an up firing driver for sony spatial audio or for dolby atmos so you get the little ceiling bounce house there's a little power button located on the top as well and then there's a little optimized button located on the opposite side there on the front behind this cloth grill there is a soft dome tweeter right in the top as well as a wide dispersion woofer right behind here and then on the sides which you can't see are two passive radiators now this is rated at 90 watts so for both of them it's 180 watts for both so 90 watts a piece i've placed the soundbar at the edge of my stand so it's not getting any bounce back from the tabletop the sub is placed on the floor under the tv and the surrounds are right behind my seats once you get everything placed and set up in the soundbar you'll have to go through the audio calibration Right front, center, left surround, right surround, left front height, right front height, left rear height, right rear height. The rear height effects was a little hit and miss depending on how I turned my head, although I did get a feeling of elevation which made the voice float in the air. Now maybe the coolest feature if you're pairing this bar up with a compatible Sony TV is the TV center speaker mode. This uses the TV's built-in speakers along with the soundbar to enhance dialogue and make it seem as if it's coming directly from the television screen. And I think it works great. You won't be able to tell over a YouTube video, but it does help with dialogue clarity. This is definitely better than just your TV speakers. The front to back panning sounded great with the decent flyover effects. The bass is a bit boomy, but it can sure shake the room for those big action flicks.
This is clearly a huge upgrade over the TV's built-in speakers. Instead of simulated surround effects from the television, you'll get real surround sound from having dedicated surround speakers. Wow, this thing, I don't know what the exact weight is, but shipping weight is 50 pounds. This is a legit big boy heavy receiver. Not only is it really heavy, but it's also a pretty big AVR as well. Size wise, we're looking at 16 inches deep by roughly seven and a quarter inches tall by 17 inches wide. Now taking a look up front, we have a bunch of different buttons here. We've got Tremaine power button, speaker selector, calibration mic input, front USB, ping button, zone selections for zone two and zone three, tuning selections, Bluetooth, test picture, test tone, pure direct mode, navigation keys, display back home options, amp menu, in-ceiling speaker selector, tone controls, sound field selections, direct input selections up top, and of course, the volume knob is on the far right. And if you don't want to look at all these buttons, you can take the cover and slide this right on top. Now everything's all hidden. And if you're wondering, the front panel cover is made out of hard plastic. All right, so taking a look around back, you can see in the upper corners, we have your antennas. We have a section for your digital inputs, optical and coax, trigger outs, IR remote in, RS-232, LAN input, two HDMI outs with HDMI out A supporting EARC. There are six HDMI inputs, all supporting 4K 120. It is HDMI 2.1 compliant, so these four HDMI inputs will support 8K60, as well as VRR and ALLM. There's a coax input for your antenna, analog inputs, zone two and three analog inputs, pre-outs for all 13 channels, as well as two subwoofer outputs, an S center output for compatible Sony television sets, composite video ins and video outs, and lastly, you have all of your five-way binding posts for all 13 channels. Specs-wise, this is rated at 150 watts per channel with two channels driven, although with all 13 channels driven, it's gonna be a little bit less. And as mentioned before, it does support 8K60, so it does have HDMI 2.1 support, as well as ALLM and VRR for you gamers out there. Now, of course, being part of their ES lineup, which stands for Elevated Standard, in case you didn't know, this does have some premium parts over their non-ES models. It's got a new large capacity power transformer, a refreshed digital circuit board, a newly designed frame buffer board chassis, new capacitors for high power, an updated heat sink, a new 32-bit DAC, a buffer amp for the DAC, and a redeveloped digital section. Also, for all you audiophiles out there, it is Rune tested, so it'll work with Rune. The speakers I'm gonna use with the AZ7000 are the Martin Logan SLM XL on wall speakers. I've got left, center, and right channels, and the surrounds are behind my seats. I've also got a RHEL T9X handling subwoofer duties. Now, since this is in my living room, I'm only gonna be going with a 5.1 setup since I don't have the space for more speakers, but the AZ7000ES does support 13.2 channels. So if you've got a bigger space, you can go with a full immersive setup. If you want a full breakdown on how to set up the AZ7000, there will be a full review in the coming weeks on Audioholics, or you can check out my full review on my channel, Shane Lee. Now let's take a quick look at the speaker setup. Speaker pattern is where you're gonna set up your speaker configuration. First option is two channels, 2.1, three, 3.1, four channels, 4.1, five, 5.1, 6.0, 60 with front wides, 6.1, 6.1 with front wides, 7.0, 7.0 using front wides, 7.1, 7.1 with front wides, 8.0 front wides, 8.1 front wides, 9.0 front wides, and 9.1 front wides. So this is where you're gonna max out all of your speaker locations for your listener level speakers. And the next option is the height slash overhead speaker configuration. We've got front heights, top middle, front Dolby up firing, surround Dolby up firing, surround back Dolby up firing, front height plus top middle, front height plus top rear, front height and rear height, top front and top middle, top front top rear, top front right height, top middle, top rear, 
Top middle rear height. Top front plus surround Dolby up firing. Top front plus surround back Dolby up firing. Front Dolby up firing plus top rear. Front Dolby plus surround Dolby up firing. Front Dolby and surround back Dolby up firing. And surround Dolby and surround back Dolby up firing. So you've got a ton of different options for your speaker configurations. You might think since the soundbar can handle overhead effects and it's got more speakers, it should probably sound better. But having dedicated speakers not crammed in a small box gives you much better separation and isolation of every effect in each speaker. It's more accurate without having any of that smearing that you can get with having so many drivers so close to each other in one little box. Which also gives you better surround movement and a larger, more spacious soundstage. Now, just like the soundbar, you can also use the TV in center channel mode, which again, blends in with your center channel speaker to make it sound like the dialogue is coming from the TV itself. Another thing you can do with this receiver is pair it up with the SW5 and RS5 speakers to connect wirelessly, which would be very handy if you don't want to run a lot of wires around your room. And the surround speakers are battery powered, so you can take them out for movie night and then put them away when you're done. Tamper matching with your front speakers aside, this is a very convenient feature. Now the only downside on having an AVR over a soundbar, depending on your outlook, would be that setup is a little more complicated. You've got more wires to deal with, and if you've got a lot more speakers, it'll definitely take up more space in your room. But there's no denying, an AVR with speakers sounds better than a soundbar. At the time of this video, the Sony 85X95L is selling for $4,300. The HTA 7000 soundbar is $1,400. The SW5 subwoofer is $700. The RS5 wireless surrounds are $600. And the AZ7000ES receiver is $3,300. All of these are available at our channel partner, Audio Advice. You can find links down below in this video's description if you want to pick anything up. And also, thank you guys for your patronage. So what are your thoughts on soundbars and AVRs? Are you a soundbar user or a receiver user? Or do you just not care at all? Leave your comments down below and let us know. As always guys, thanks for watching. If you want, you can follow us on audioholics.com or for additional content, you can find us on patreon.com audioholics. Thanks for watching and remember, keep listening.